Okay, we're going to consider inverse trigonometric functions and some essentials to know if um, you're going to involve them in work on calculus, which um, integration does quite a lot, and so does differentiation. So going back to what you might know already, and hopefully you do know some of these things already, yeah, inverse trig functions are things like inverse sine of x, so the function y equals inverse sine of x, or the process of taking inverse sine, if you're doing triangle trig, uh, looks like that. We've got inverse cosine. And inverse tan, inverse tangent in four. You might have seen them too as a step in solving for an angle in triangular trig or in trigonometric functions to finding solutions to uh, trigonometric equations. Now what these are and are not, I'm going to use uh, inverse sine as uh, the ex for the examples, but these all have um, differences. These things are not not the same as, not equivalent to, um, using sine. That is not the equivalent to 1 on sine x. Okay? Uh, it's not the equivalent to um, sine x to the power negative 1. Hence, it's not equivalent to cosec x. All right, so these things are what it's not. Okay, these are all reciprocal functions. And they're not, they're not inverse trig functions. Okay, so that's what they're not. Um, it's interesting that you can, uh, as a little aside, you can do something like sine x all squared and call it sine squared x and that's fine but you cannot say that sine x to the negative one which is that you cannot say that's equivalent to inverse sine x okay no all right, so it's a bit of an inconsistency in the symbology there, in the nomenclature. But uh, another name for these that is okay. So in this in this video, green, bad, brown, good. Okay, so you can say inverse sine of x is also known as arc sine. So have you ever seen arc sine? Um, it means the same thing. Okay, um, same with um, arc cosine or arc cos and arc tan or arc tangent. Whoops, arc tan or sometimes arc tangent in full. Okay, so those things are fine. Okay, so uh, for example, that's arc tan x there, that's arc cos x. Okay. Going to have a little bit of a look at the graphs of inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan, and get an appreciation of why um, the the domains are specified as such. Now, with inverse functions, inverse functions are reflected images of each other in the line y equals x. That's not just for trig; that's for any function. Okay, so when we've got um, y equals sine x, the inverse function is x equals sine y. Okay, so to get y by itself, we need to take the inverse sine. That will the inverse sine of both sides will. Um, if we take the inverse sine of both sides. It's what we're doing, uh, and swap swap sides here. So I'm just going to say, um, in other words, we're saying sine without making any changes. Sine y equals x. Just putting the uh, y on the left. And the x on the right. So you could say by taking the inverse sine, you're saying y equals inverse sine of x. Right? 
So it's swapping the X and the Y's around, and you might, if you remember all the great stuff about your trig functions, that there would be the range in a regular function of Y equals sine X, but look at it, it's the domain for the inverse, okay, because we're swapping the variables around. So Y equals sine X has a range of negative 1 to 1, you know that, and so does cosine, but for the inverse, it's it's the it's the domain, not the range. Same with tan. Okay, tan um, because it moves up and down wildly, can have any real number for the range, but certainly that's not the case for the domain. But if we have the inverse, look at that. So that's quite different. Um, so that the actual domain and ranges switch around. Let's have a look at some graphs. So um, I've got y equals x there, based on that statement about the uh, reflection. And we've got good old y equals tan x there. Sine x, not tan x. Okay, it's been a long day. Still going to. Y equals sine x is there. You're familiar with that. Now, the inverse sine, I'm going to activate that. And it's reflected within, its, within the extent of its domain. It is reflected um, in that line, purple line, y equals x. Uh, it's the reflection of the red line. Okay, so you can see there's a fainter purple line there and it only goes up to the extent of its domain, of course, and then it stops, but you can see that's reflected. Okay, so you can see that if we just, as it peels out to the left there, it peels to the right and down there. Okay, so there we go. So that's that's it for sine and inverse sine. Same relationship for cosine and inverse cosine. You can see within the extent of its uh, negative one to one domain, it does the same thing there. You might need to pause to have a look at that, but it does do it, and it's reflected in y equals x. Um, for example, here it's peeling up to the left and curving, where it's peeling down there. And with this one here, where if you see where the cursor is, if you look really closely, it's moving down to the right there, whereas it's moving up to the left there, and you can see it peel and go in an anti-clockwise rotation there, whereas it starts to go in a clockwise rotation, but stops because its domain runs out. Now, hopefully you've looked at the crazy graph of 10x. It's got discontinuities, um, okay, every time. For example, 10 of 90 is undefined. Uh, pi and 2 radians, okay, so that would show that it's asymptotic, all right, at certain points, um, asymptotic behavior, but anyway, the tan, just remember it's all real numbers, the green line there, inverse tan, x, very different, okay, but you can see that it does reflect um, but it's kind of, you probably have to zoom out a fair bit and have a closer look at that one, but it certainly behaves the same, just a bit harder to see in this short video. But you can always get onto Desmos or your TI graphics calculator or something similar to that and look at it and verify that completely um, yourself. But there's a little bit of preliminary work about inverse trig functions because we're going to apply some calculus and involve those functions in calculus very soon.